Aloha guys, we're back. Dr. Tom Walker here again. We're going to pick up with chemistry right where we left off. We left off on, on uh, PowerPoint slide 19. We were talking about ions and how important they are. These are important cations. How do you remember the, the cations positive? Cats are positive, furry, nice things. Most ions are elements, like this is hydrogen ion, this is potassium, but some are molecules like ammonium ion. Important acid base balance. We'll talk about that soon. So, some of them can be a molecular ion as well. Common anions chloride, bicarbonate ion, HCO3 is a minus. So, here's another molecular ion phosphate, uh, phosphorus atom and four oxygen. It also has a, uh, is a molecular ion. These are anions, negative ones, found in bones and teeth. When an electrolyte like salt, in fact, this is salt, see sodium chloride, is dissolved in water, it, uh, it dissolves and ionizes. It forms ions because those ionic bonds are weak, as we said. So we have sodium ions and chloride ions floating around in there. These become what, is known, what are known as electrolytes, guys, and they're extremely important. They're what makes nerves function, a bunch of other things. So, yes, you have to have... A certain amount of salt and sodium in the body or you will die problem is that a lot of processed food has too much salt in it and too much salt is a problem as well okay atoms make up molecules molecules make up compounds molecules two more atoms bonded together like here we have an oxygen molecule a compound is molecules formed by two more different atoms. Um, this, well, very quickly, guys, because we, we have to move along here. Oxygen and hydrogen forms uh, molecular forms of themselves because they're both highly reactive. But most molecules are like this one, and this is uh, another example, again, of uh, example of water. Hydrogen, uh, oxygen, and two hydrogen. Water is a vital substance. Um, it's thought to be absolutely required for life of any sort when they're looking for life on other planets or like Mars and stuff. It, the, they're, they're actively searching for a lot of things, but they're particularly searching for liquid water. It's a universal solvent to dissolve stuff in. Temperature regulator. That's why coastal regions like Hawaii uh, have a more temperate. And you go to Nebraska and it's 40 below in the winter and 15 uh, above 115 degrees in the summer. Ideal lubricant, crucial part of most chemical reactions. Protective mechanism, like around joints and things. It's not pure water, but... Okay, the blood gases are oxygen and carbon dioxide. We need oxygen to make energy. Carbon dioxide is the waste product after we make this energy in our cells. We'll talk about that in the next video. But also we need a certain concentration of uh, carbon dioxide to be in the blood to maintain the acid base balance or the pH of it. Red blood cells are what carry oxygen and carbon dioxide throughout the body. Okay, we mentioned very briefly a chemical reaction, for example, is when we start a campfire and we burn wood. They define it the interaction of atoms of molecules or compounds to form new chemical combinations. After you burn wood, you can't make it go back the way it was. Um, chemicals are, are substances that make a chemical reaction go faster or l less energy is called a catalyst. On our cars, we have catalytic converters to help with the admissions. Catalysts in biological systems are referred to as, are called enzymes, and enzymes are very important. So again, a, a catalyst, chemical substances speed up substances that speed up the rate of a chemical reaction. If they're in biological systems, they're known as enzymes. And you might as well memorize that word right now because it's real important. Okay. Substances tend to be neutral like water or human blood is almost neutral. Or it can be more acidic like uh, the, your, the acid in your car battery. Or it can be very alkaline or base like ammonia, things like that. An acid has high numbers of hydrogen ions in it. The more hydrogen ions they have, the more uh, acidic it is. 
base has less hydrogen, more hydroxyl ions. You can have strong and weak acids or, or, and bases, depending. Very important because the balance of acid and bases is crucial for life within human beings. And that's measured with what we call the pH scale. pH is a unit of measurement indicating how many hydrogen ions are in a solution. The more that there are there, the more acidic it is. The fewer that are there, the more basic it is. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14. 7 is neutral. Pure water is neutral. Blood is almost neutral. Hydrochloric acid, like in our stomach, look, is a 0. It's as strong as the battery acid of your car. Lemon juice is very strong. Vinegar is a strong, fairly strong acid. Urine is weakly acidic. And then things like soap and household ammonia are very alkaline or basic. Now, a strong base can also be very caustic, too. Sodium hydroxide will eat you up, as I made the mistake of finding out when I was in a middle school science class. Uh, acidosis, too many hydrogen ions. Now, this is to actually talking. It doesn't say this here. But this is the pH of blood, 7.35 to 7.45. If it drops below this, it's, you're said to be an acidosis. If it gets above this, you're said to be an alkalosis. Life will end for you very shortly if you deviate very far. And again, what is, uh, what's being measured in the pH scale? How many hydrogen ions there are. If you have lots of them, it's a strong acid. If you only have a few, it's a, um, a, a strong alkaline. <laughs> Six forms of energy, mechanical energy, like with gears and drive shafts, chemical energy, like burning wood, electrical energy, like in our wires, radiant energy, like light from the sun, thermal energy from heat or nuclear energy. However, in living things, in all living things, the molecule ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is the energy used by all living things. Three parts base sugar, three phosphate group, okay. In these phosphate groups, where they, uh, that's why it's called triphosphate, there are three of them, is where the energy is stored. All living things use ATP for energy. Where do we get energy? Of course, from our food we eat. After it's broken down and digested, absorbed, and sent by, via the portal vein to the liver, it's utilized throughout the body. But ultimately, our food is converted into adenosine triphosphate. And it's in these high energy chemical bonds that the energy of life, guys, is stored. Everything from whales to bacteria to mice, rats like this, all, all of us, humans, all of us get our energy from ATP. Now, energy can be stored, which is potential energy, like this is stored because it's, uh, it's spring-loaded here, see? It took energy for the human to cock this thing and fasten it to catch the mouse, but it didn't catch it. But the energy is released. Okay, here we're gonna run through this quickly. A mixture, combination of two or more substances that can be separated by ordinary physical means. If you put uh, dirt in a glass and you, of water and you stir it up, it becomes muddy water. However, that's a mixture because you can run that through a filter and it'll remove the mud. A solution is different. For example, ocean water is a solution. It's got salt dissolved in it. But you can't run salt water through a filter and get rid of the salt. If you could, it would, save, it would solve all the world's water problems. You have to distill it. You've got to boil it, and it leaves the salt behind, and then catch it, and so on. So solutions remain evenly distributed. Normal saline, like the, our, uh, the fluids in our body, Solute is what's dissolved. Solvent is what it's dissolved in. So in salt water, solute's the salt. Solvent's the water. Two types of solutions. Aqueous solution, meaning in water. Or you can have tinctures, which are solutions in alcohol. Now, there are many different kinds of alcohol. The kind we drink is ethanol. The rest of them are highly poisonous. In fact, ethanol is poisonous. That's why you get drunk and you have these symptoms. Suspensions and precipitates. If you got particles floating around in it, it's a suspension. 
Colloidal suspension, the particles stay with the liquid. Precipitates, precipitates, they, they settle out. That's all we're going to say about that. Oh, we're finished already. Well, let's go back and say some more. <laughs> uh, we covered most of it, though, guys. The most important thing is to understand um, how important the valence shell, and I wish they that word would have appeared magically here in our PowerPoint. Valence shell. The valence shell is the outermost shell of the of the atom. The number of electrons that are present there and the number that should be there to fill it and make it satisfied, that's what I always say, determines how reactive that, that atom is and re determines all the chemical reactions in our universe. So the, the number of electrons in the valence shell is extremely important. Again, something like hydrogen that only has a single electron in its, in its normal form, the simplest element in the universe, the most abundant element in the universe. In order to make it satisfied, it needs to either have none there or two. Because Why? Because the way nature set up the, the first valence shell is to have two electrons. So it'll bond with itself out in nature to form molecular hydrogen, two hydrogens. And then each one has two, so it's satisfied. Does it make sense, guys? If it only has one, it's wild and highly reactive and will explode and burn. Oxygen is also that way. It has, um, its valence shell is set up in such a way that it's extremely reactive, and that's why oxygen is necessary for burning. It's what causes rust of metals and things. Um, again, isotopes are substances that have a, a differing number of neutrons. The only thing relevant to medicine about that is there, there are some some very sophisticated diagnostic imaging that uses isotopes. Many isotopes are radioactive. And when they're radioactive, you could trace them in the body. So if you want to see, find cancerous tissue, for example, that's gobbling up radioactive glucose at a higher rate to see if we can track the cancer, they actually do that with a, um, a diagnostic imaging called a PET scan, for example. Um, electrolytes are real important. When we get to uh, neuroanatomy, and or, uh, neurophysiology, I'm sorry, and uh, where we're understanding about how nerves work. Nerves do not conduct electricity like our wall sockets do. They, uh, nerve signals are caused by sodium and chloride and potassium moving in and out of the nerve, the membrane around the nerve. So we have to have a certain percentage of sodium ions and these other ions in our body fluids all the time. If you don't, it's fatal. In fact, you can die from drinking too much water over too short a period of time. Like if you took a bet from somebody and you guzzled down two gallons of water in an hour, there's a, a, a very high chance you could die from that. It's called hyponatremia. And the reason being is because the concentration of sodium ions in the body fluids becomes too low to sustain life. Now, you wouldn't th that may not sound reasonable. You might think, oh, man, I like to drink two gallons of water. It ain't going to kill me. Yeah, you better not. You better do it over the course of a day. Every once in a while, there'll be a marathon runner or somebody that'll guzzle down too much and they'll keel over. So all this is real important, guys. Chemical reactions and these anions and cations and stuff. pH is extremely important. Why? Because you saw with the blood, 7.34 to 7.54, uh, if it, it has to, blood, the pH of blood has to remain in that narrow range or life will cease, man. Urine has, to, urine has a much broader pH range, but it, it also has one. And other uh, substances in the body, other chemicals. So all this stuff, guys, is part of homeostasis that uh, we talked about last time. The enormous collection of processes that takes place to maintain our internal environment. Okay, we've made it through chemistry. Um, our next one will be about the cell. Cells are basic unit of living things. Very interesting. We'll be talking about chemical aspects then, but in a different sense. So join me next time. It'll be on the cell. Be there or be square. Dr. Thomas signing off.